Bibles to Genesis chapter number 26. Genesis 26. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Genesis 26. And uh, just the presence of God tonight just aligns with the Word of God. How many times have we looked in our life and maybe not in that present moment we necessarily felt, sensed, or knew what God was doing or up to, but then we look back and it was in that moment that we draw just a great source of strength because though we didn't realize it, Brother Doug, God was in that moment. He was ministering. Amen. And so our life, living in the present, allowing God to touch us, to help us, amen, uh, it, it, it's just, it, it's almost like uh, our past uh, cheers us on uh, to where we are presently and into our future. And so I want to look at a thought tonight, and I don't want to take uh, a great deal of time. I just want to look and see what we can gain from the Word of God. Genesis chapter number 26, verse number 18, the Bible says this, uh, and Isaac dug again the wells of water which, the, they, which they had dug in the days of Abraham, his father. For the Philistines had stopped them uh, after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. Amen. And so uh, another way that we could say this would be, he reopened the wells of water and he restored their names. Can I just look at it that way this evening? He reopened the wells of water and he restored their name. And basically that's what I want to do in this message tonight. Amen. Looking at the wells of water, looking at reopening them and restoring the names and seeing what that will minister and help us with. Abraham was known for three things. He was known that he was a man of tents, he was a man of altars, and he was a man of wells. Now, I know that he was more that of, of altars than of tents when you look at Lot, but there are still those three things that are represented in the life of Abraham. There are the tents. He's a reminder to us that we are a pilgrim, that we are a traveler. This is not our home. This is not where we're staying. Uh, a reminder that 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 he built altars, and uh, I, I love Genesis chapter number fifteen. I was refreshing my mind uh, as as, uh, as as Abraham has all these carcasses of animals laid out, and then comes the vultures after, and he's fighting them off so that he can take these carcasses and, and get to the night, and he can sacrifice them under God. How amazing is that? That Abraham fought back until the night came so that he could sacrifice to God. Amen. Sometimes it may be all day long that we're working until the night comes and we've been fighting Brother Doug. Amen. We've been protecting the carcasses. The vultures are coming. They're trying to take them but oh, in the night season that we can sacrifice and we can worship unto God because we we fought. Amen. And in God uh, Abraham was able to, to pronounce blessing because of the fight of the carcasses. Amen. So a man of tents, a man of altars. But there was no denying he was a man of wells. And uh, it was a harsh climate in which Abraham uh, 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 moved and there the desert was always threatening. I know that we don't know much about that this summer. Amen. All about, you know, uh, being dry and uh, having a difficult time bearing his family. Amen. But in the culture that Abraham lived in, it was there. He was there in the desert. And uh, he was always, uh, uh, as a pilgrim, he knew the importance of digging the wells deep. He knew the importance of digging the wells deep. And not only did he bless himself, but he blessed all that was around him because he dug the wells deep. Get that in your mind tonight. We can bless those that are around us because we dig the wells deep. Amen. Let's be well diggers. 
Amen. We don't know what the future has. We live in an area that can be barren spiritually. Amen. So we need to dig the wells deep. And so he blessed those who needed it. He lived in a hostile country surrounded by his enemies. But, 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 but the, 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 the tangible, the, 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 the example of who he was and what he did, he dug wells and was a blessing for everyone. Amen. I want to tell you that when we learn to live our life, not to ourselves, but to share with others, there is a blessing in that. I love when we can share with others, helping to dig the well deep so I can share it with others. And, and so uh, when we look at uh, the life of Abraham and, and, and Isaac and Jacob, uh, you only find that there's one chapter that is devoted to his son Isaac. And, and so the Jews say that there was only one chapter that was needed for Isaac because he was obedient he did things right. And that's, that, that, that's what their tradition will tell. And so the Philistines, uh, uh, there they were. They come and they stopped up the wells. But here it is. We read that Isaac, he redug the wells. Now, was he tempted to go down to Egypt and do the same thing his father did? Of course, during famine. But God said, don't do it. And guess what? Isaac didn't do it. And instead of uh, doing it, he stayed right there. And Isaac obeyed. Isaac in his obedience, the Bible says that he sold in a time of famine, Brother Craig, and he reaped a hundredfold. I believe this tonight, that when we are obedient to God, even in a time of famine, if we will sow, we will reap a hundredfold because of our obedience to God. Amen. Faithful, the test of faithful people is to sow in the midst of famine. And it didn't stop right there in the sowing, but he reopened the wells of his father Abraham. And as he did reopen the wells, you'll notice. That Isaac started by saying, I, I, I'm going to clean out. I'm going to choose regular vernacular yard the way that you and I would as we talk about our dad. Amen. He, he said, I, I'm going to clean out those old wells of dads. And, and, and I remember what it tasted like and, and, and what it was like. I, I, you know, there are some wells, amen, that new wells do not taste like the old wells. I, when I was preparing for this message, you may think that I'm absolutely crazy. But my grandma's house, and I don't know if I ever told this, that her house was a very unique way it was set up. Brother Craig, her plumbing was not that of, of, of having a water pumped in uh, because she had all the, the necessary equipment to do it. She actually sat at the base of a hill where there was a, a, a stream coming out of the hill. Uh, we would go up there uh, in our, in, in, from her house, Brother Doug. You, you may remember it. We cleaned that old well up there. There would be frogs jumping in it. But in that water, it would run in a pipe in the house. Even gravity, Sister Beth, is what flushed her toilet. Her, her situation was so unique. And she had this fresh spring water running in her house all year long. It was absolutely amazing. And I'm telling you, as a child, she had this uh, this, this old uh, a metal pipe that was running out. And there at the corner of her house, and I'd go there and hang on that. I'd get me a drink after a hot day of, of doing whatever. And there's nothing like that water. The minerals in it. And, and just what it was. Uh, even a, a freshly dug well that's way down deep, getting in some uh, water supply way underneath the earth's surface, cannot compare to that old well. Nothing. The only thing I've ever found that tastes anything like it is the sunny water. But there are times, now that I'm a dog, I would love to go back and drink from that well. And so here it is that Abraham in left the wells and Isaac said, there's nothing like these old wells that satisfy. And I'm not against change. In fact, I, I would suggest that most of the time we don't fight against it. It's going to happen in life. We can't change the gospel of God's word. It is written. It is firm. But 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 there are things that, that will change in our church and in our life. And it's best not to fight against it. But when it comes spiritually speaking, there is nothing like the old wells. So here it is. That the Bible uh, uh, said that 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 uh, uh, the old wells, and sometimes we like to make life easy. Life isn't all about being easy. Jeroboam's sin was this. 
He said uh, uh, in Scripture, he wanted, uh, he wanted the people to be able to go and worship God in, in such a good way. We look at it. What Jeroboam did was, what was he went to the, to, 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 to the north and south. And my, and my mind uh, rem remembers correctly to Dan and Beersheba. And there he built a place to, to worship God. But the problem of it was he made it convenient for people. But they were climbing the hill of Zion and it no longer meant to say, do you know what? We have it so easy in our churches. Amen. We, we, we you know, we, we, we try to make good times for folks. We have great air conditioning. We have padded pews. Uh, you know, we live it. Or, or even sometimes what we do because of everybody's busy schedule. But I'm sometimes thinking we're falling short because we're just trying to make it convenient to worship God. And sometimes the convenience makes it very inconvenient for real worship. So here it is that, 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 that he begins to dig the wells. David, the, the, the psalmist, he said, as the heart of uh, uh, Pat, after the water works so Pat, my soul after thee, O God. But he goes down in verse number 4 and 5 and 42 of Psalms. He said, when I remember the things, I poured out my soul within me. Uh, I, I, for I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that, that kept holy day. Do you know what? That God wants us to do some things the old way. Redig the wells. So old worship. Amen. Not seeking new traditions. Amen. Jesus. Do you know I talked about the woman at the well this morning. And her problem was she was living in sin. But one of her problems was she was stuck in the tradition. She wanted to do it the old traditional way. I, I, this, is the, this is the way my father's done it. Jesus said, no. I, I'm showing you the right way. Don't get stuck in tradition. Don't get stuck in and just leading new. Amen. But worship God. Amen. I wonder what would happen if even those folks, Sister Rachel from the book of Acts would come. Those folks, Brother Justin, that they brought bread from house to house. What would the baptism, what would baptism look like to that, that Ethiopian eunuch? I wonder uh, what Cornelius, what he would say if he came into our midst and how the Spirit of God moves versus how he's seen it move. Amen. God, help us. So tradition, getting out of the way. Amen. Not allowing tradition, but not allowing to be so overtaken by new that we miss the old wells that God has for us. So I'm trying to drink at the wells of accommodation. Amen. And I just wanted to be accommodated. But David, do you remember him when he was hiding away in the cave? He said, Oh, that I may have water from the wells of Bethlehem. There was something, Sister God, about that water. He wanted. His men of the Craig broke through, got him the water. And so when adversity comes in our life, I think one of the greatest things that we can do is open up the old wells. Open up the old wells. So here it is. Isaac reopened one well. and uh, But the herds of Abimelech quarreled with him over the water. And he called, he called that well Essek, E-S-E-K, or the well of, of, of contention. And then he reopens another well. The Philistines get angry with him. And he calls the well of that uh, sitna, S-I-T-N-A, or enmity. So at, at this point, most of us would have given up because of everything that's going on. God, I want to drink at the old well. I, I need some water from you. Life is rough and it's barren and famine is here. And so he begins to open up a, 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 a more wells. I, I want you to know something. It is a privilege to be able to open up the wells, amen, and be able to get something to drink. It may take some work and it may take some pain, amen, but let's get back to the old wells. And then he opens up the third well, and that well is called Rehoboth, meaning I have found room here. Amen, aren't you glad that when we go and we open up the well, there's room for a multiple of us? 
some group of people to come and drink of the goodness of God. Can I tell you, I want Miracle Revival Church to be a place that in this modern day, we have opened up the wells. In a day where there's political contention like we've never seen before, where there's divides in our country, where there's hatred, where there's tolerance of sin more than ever before. God, let our church be known as a church that has wells that's been reopened. Amen. Here is our Rehoboth. Here is our place where I have found room. God makes room and God provides. Amen. Amen. Let's open up the wells. Amen. He opens up the, 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 the fourth well. And he calls that well Sheba, the well of oath. Amen. He remembers all the promises he's made. There's times we need to get back to the well and we remember the promises we made to God. Let me get personal with you tonight. How many of you have prayed God whatever it takes to draw closer to you? I do, God. But when life begins to get barren, life begins to get dry, life goes the way that we didn't anticipate it or want, amen, I want to tell you that when we get back to the world of all, we'll say, God, I've trusted you. And so here at the well of oath, I'm drinking. You're the God of my father, Abraham, who provided, who led, who you called him out and you guided him. He is the patriarch or the father of faith. And so his faith may it be in me. Amen. You provided for him in his old age. You're going to provide for me. Amen. In all my days ahead. I'm talking about reopening the wells. And then we come. We're at the fourth well. And the promises are renewed. I love what John 4, verse number 13 through 14 says. Whosoever drinks of this water, Jesus said, will, will thirst again. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst again. For the water that I give him shall become, the Bible says, it will become in him as a fountain. I've never been to Yellowstone, but any of you ever hear about Old Faithful? Old Faithful, that geyser that springs up. Amen. How many of you believe this? That the enemy would like to stop up your well. Amen. He'd like to take what you have dug and God has blessed and you God has given. He'd like to stop your well. You've tried to share it with others. You've dug long, you've dug hard, and you've dug deep. I believe that God wants to give us a well that's like a geyser. That out of our belly flows a living river of water. Amen. Of the Holy Ghost. I still believe that God wants to move in our midst. Amen. I believe that He wants to move and fill with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues. I believe that God wants to move that even at the day of Pentecost, amen, that He gets upon people and they don't understand, the world doesn't understand. It looks as if they're drunk. They're speaking in another tongue. Amen. And they get in, in a place where the Spirit of God moves and you find that Peter is transformed. He truly becomes the rock, amen, that he is known for. No longer doubting, no longer boisterous, boisterous but yet running with contention and trouble comes, but He becomes the rock. Amen. And there from that upper room, the gospel is spread around the globe. Amen. I believe that it's time to reopen the wells. Amen. Miracle Revival Church was founded upon the move of the Holy Ghost in Pentecost. I wonder if we've allowed the enemy to come by and stop up the wells. Amen. And we've drunk at just being comfortable. We've drunk at convenience. We've drunk at tradition. Tradition. Amen. We draw get things changing and becoming new and embracing it. But all the time, it doesn't satisfy our thirst. Amen. There's a longing to go back to the wells and redig because only that water will satisfy. 
It's time to redig the wells. How many of you believe this? That there's nothing like the law and God's will. How is your well doing? I know that most of us probably live in homes where the well is dug deep and we have a water pump that pumps it into our house. But if we lived in olden days where we had to live close to a spring, you know what? We'd be up there in the middle of autumn. We'd be digging the leaves out there because we didn't want to get stopped up. If any type of debris got in there, we'd be digging it out because we want the water at the well. This evening, there is water at the well. And we've got to be ready and willing to redig the well. Mr. Ben, if you come to the piano tonight. Is joy withering away? Is faith waning? Is power and victorious living becoming weakened? It's time tonight to redeem the wells. You know, really, Brother Craig, Abraham is our father of faith today. Brother Dennis, he exemplifies faith. And there in the hall of faith, he is given as that patriarch, the father of faith. He's left us wells. But have we freed up them? Or has the enemy combined and taken them? There can be that of contingency and complacency and pain and roughness. But I need to tell you something. We've got to keep on digging so that we can get to the well where there is room. I don't want this church to be known as a church that, oh, well, Brother Doug, he has him a well, and Sister Stacy has her a well, and Sister Beth has her a well. They're all drinking. But I want folks to look at Maricor Bible Church and say, man, those folks have dug and dug deep. And there's a well where there's room for all. We live in a hurting world. They need the well. Listen, some of you, your parents need the well. Some of you, your children need the well and your grandchildren need the well. If they don't get to the well, they're going to die and go to hell. God, help us to redig. I don't want to live my Christian walk in complacency. Listen, one thing that is my vision, and I cast it before you, is that we never come to church and just go through the motions, but we come and meet in the presence of God. That means we've got to dig the well. we got to dig the well. Amen. Being fascinated by God, as I said this morning, as we dig the well, there's no water that is like it. Oh, I can relate. I can relate. Not only physical water, but I want spiritual water. Can I ask some of you folks, what was it like for you in your early years, in your early experience, where you dug and the power of God was so powerful? Is it still as powerful, or have we traded in tradition and complacency to for where we are today? When God says, I have the well, but you've got to dig them and re-dig them. Let's dig deep tonight. Can we gather and I'm done talking? Let's gather in tonight. Let's find a place of prayer. Let's redig the well. Amen. A well where